Hi everyone, I'm so happy to be here. This is a wonderful campus and uh, the idea what the university uh, presented to the whole concept of uh, of a creative center, creative tech center is just wonderful. Just a um, uh, lovely, uh, lovely intro for, uh, for my keynote and for the presentation. Um, I'm Gunit Kulkowska and uh, I'll be touching upon a participation a little bit more, as it is uh, as well one of the uh, um, founding blocks of uh, augmented urbans, um, and very much discussed uh, in in the last uh, decade. But uh, first of all, uh, I want to understand why are you here? You've been coming this morning, uh, taking hours uh, from your uh, daily duties, spending time with us here, um, listening to us. What brings you here? Where are you from? Who has been working with the, with the XR before? Okay. Uh, Who is coming from urban planning fields? Planners in the front row, very well. Uh, who, is, uh, who has no clue uh, what we are talking about and uh, is just has a huge curiosity about uh, what is there? Very well, you see there's, and, and I like honest answers and I really would like to encourage you uh, uh, to continue in such way and uh, don't just listen to the, to the speakers uh, here presenting, but um, get new connections, um, network uh, within uh, and the super cool guys in, uh, in here in this room and uh, during the whole day. And this is where the participation actually starts. <laughs> Lovely to be joined around the XR as well. Um, yeah, a little bit of my passion and uh, and how it started for me. Um, um, who of you have been uh, building uh, tree houses when you were kids? Uh, much more of a can hands <laughs> raised, right? Uh, I was one of those kids and doing so much of like uh, variations of the tree houses and. Uh, one of the things that, that stand out to when I think about it is uh, not just the house itself, but actually the surroundings and, and how it all fits into the landscape and uh, where are the viewpoints, how do I organize the terrace, the, the kitchen and so on and so forth. And uh, guess who, uh, where I went to study uh, after the high school? Architecture, obviously. <laughs> Uh, however, uh, it uh, went out a little different than I was uh, was, was expecting. And uh, when when my first project, like for for the first, uh, I didn't, I think around three courses, you know, you're just uh, uh, learning how to visualize and how to create and how to how to be an artist uh, in a way, the architect in a way. Uh, but then on the on the very end, uh, you get to present your visions. Uh, in the big posters um, uh, to the people um, and uh, to the communities. And you understand that they have no clue <laughs> about what you're trying to uh, say to them. And in fact, all the other ways of communicating uh, with, uh, with non-professionals or basically our people uh, are just simply not enough to be able to deliver the, the idea, to, to be able to, um, to, to immerse, you know, in, in, uh, in, in the vision um, and to actually get some kind of valuable feedback out from that communication. Um, so I started to dig more into the participation and placemaking and uh, started to get more interested in, in what's going on. Um, so this is the project uh, this is the project where uh, basically was one of the first uh, in Riga to develop with a community um, uh, one uh, urban space. And there should be a little bit of animation. There are a few of the images, but um, it's actually interesting to see how it turned out. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, so basically involving the community, turning the very uh, blank space, or maybe you can delete that one on the front, maybe it's not added. Try to, okay. Hmm. If you 
try to just play. Too bad. Anyways, that happens. Um, so involving the community on uh, basically turning a very empty pocket space in a very neglected uh, neighborhood into something that would actually uh, become uh, a kickoff for the community gatherings. And uh, in uh, that was like a two years process, basically, in working uh, workshop after workshop, uh, intervention after in intervention, trying to figure out what are the methodologies and how to involve the public uh, and designing the space. Mm -hmm. Another uh, participation uh, topic, uh, youthification, or basically youth and the space. Um, we were able to turn um, a space, a pocket space again, uh, within the old town, uh, very central Riga, that was just left over and basically you know uh there was nothing happening uh we turned that in in a few days basically and nights i have to say uh we turned it into the skate park uh or basically a skate ramp uh for the for the youngsters being able to actively come in uh into the space uh basically just disrupt uh, how it works. If that was just a, a quiet corner of an old town, become a lively, vibrant, buzzy uh, place for youngsters. Old towns are, at least in, in Riga case, they are uh, concentrated with, uh, with the schools and, uh, and kids and children and youth and any uh, uh, levels and ages. Um, um, to hang out, but they don't have a space where to hang out. So what are the communications and, uh, and uh, how, how do youth merges with old uh, uh, city structure? And we were able to uh, bring uh, Jan Nesario, um, a landscape architect and a skate park uh, designer, you probably the crowd is familiar, uh, and uh, Ian Borden, uh, which is one of the basically founders of the concept of uh, skateboarding, urban sports and the city uh, into the place and skate the ramp. And for like two weeks, it become just like crazy live and totally opposite of what uh, the old town looks like. There was so many interesting aspects of, uh, of this project uh, and it turned out to become a process rather than uh, and just a placemaking intervention. It became uh, a base for a policy uh, change where we, uh, we were able to lobby uh, the youth participation and, and youth spaces within uh, the master plan of, uh, of Riga development. Because of that intervention, because of that provocation uh, and very proactive uh, action. And uh, this is something that I found from our documentation of, uh, of the projects and what actually uh, forms uh, the space. What are those layers of, of creating space? Um, mental space, social space and the physical space. And again, if we a little bit uh, remind ourselves what is the event that we are uh, here, XR participation, um, urban planning, this is something that uh, almost I could uh, describe as extended uh, reality. Being able to combine these three elements. Of course, it has the explanation, the official one in a way that VR, AR and, and other immersive realities and the tools are, are part of the extended reality. But I would provoke you to put an, uh, an, an equal sign uh, also between those. So this is also the, the connection that uh, I, I got uh, from my own experience on working in hands-on and the placemaking and trying to use the space as a communication platform, space as, uh, as a platform for democracy in an involvement. Um, and XR for me is, uh, is playing the same role, just having a, a few more benefits um, being able to scale and to address in, in a much uh, uh, wider um, uh, context and in much shorter time, <laughs> I'd say. Because if that project, those projects take a lot of time, then building the, um, uh, the project proposal uh, for XR takes uh, a little less time. 
All of those solutions, however, are to lift the way we plan or redesign the planning culture, I'd say planning and participation uh, culture into this another level. And, and this is, I think, uh, a connection that I would really encourage to, uh, to discuss maybe with, with the planners and uh, XR companies uh, and XR specialists, like how do we actually redesign the planning cultures and participation cultures with the digital tools? I don't have answer and I'm not here definitely to give you any answers of, uh, of these uh, questions. I'm just here to actually ask, ask, ask questions. Um, technology uh, versus process then, because uh, would you agree that the first thing that comes into your mind when we uh, think about or we speak about uh, XR is, right, technology, glasses, then when we discuss like what is the application of technology, we say, oh, it's not scalable, it's not yet there, we don't have the VR gear in our purse, you know, we don't carry it along. But is it really the, the value of, uh, of the XR? Is it really just the technology? Or is it the redesigning the workflow, you know, or re-questioning in a way uh, why we are planning in general and what the participation means? And this goes very well together with short term versus long term. So whether it's a short term visualization where we put a lot of efforts and, uh, and emphasizes, Architects are probably very familiar with building the, the sales picture that has to embed everything within it, you know. Uh, uh, instead of uh, actually building an engaging design uh, process. Sometimes, in fact, uh, we, we kill our uh, long-term visions uh, just for short-term goals, to have just like short-term gains, have a wow effect. And technology in such way has been for a, uh, for a long time uh, playing this novel, branding, uh, looking smart and good and, and progressive role. But I believe that there is much more that it can uh, do for, uh, for planning and participation. Okay, knowing all of that, uh, agree or disagree, where do we start? Like what is really, if we are planners, if we are architects, if we are uh, um, working in municipality, we are really ambitious and motivated to uh, have inclusive participatory uh, city. Uh, what are the questions that we should ask? And uh, this is where I really would love to put uh, the order of how I think a question should be asked. Uh, starting not from a technology, but starting from the process and an audience, basically, on why why are you trying to actually involve uh, the public? What is that story that you want to tell or you want to open for discussion? You know, what is that call to action? Is it is it this pocket space that we want to? Uh, refurbish or, or we want to redesign, we want to make it active because we know that in this area we need more youth uh, active, activation, we know that there is a new urban generation that we have to invest, so this is this is the story, this is the call to action that, uh, that we start. Uh, how? What is that user journey? So what is that uh, youngster who who is he or she uh, that will actually take part in our uh, participatory uh, process? Does he go to the school and, and we're going to meet him in the school to show something or, or engage something or he's going to come to us or we're going to go to the skate park and just have a, a pop up there and, and run an a, a interactive workshop or a session? And just just after that, the very last thing is the technology that we use. And I have to say that also from Augmented Urban's uh, perspective and the project experience, uh, it may be a lot of technologies like kind of you know, coming into the place in a different uh, uh, um, urban planning stages for different participatory levels. There are technologies that are more easy to use, um, that are more mobile, and there are technologies that are more heavier and, and requests are very dedicated. Uh, space for that. So it's not starting about what, but it starts about uh, why. Uh, now, 
you're here a very active community, I guess, right? You've been taking part in, in creating a, uh, either a campus or the city. How do you participate? What, what, have, what has been your um, participation experience? Can you share a little bit? Who has participated in, the, in some sort of discussion about the neighborhood where you live in? Okay. You see, there are. So those were neighborhood meetings. So how, how did you feel about them as such? It's, isn't it a, a one way? P feel free, like, it doesn't matter if I have a mic. <laughs> Has it been a conversation? Has it been open questions or it's been, hey, this is the vision that we are presenting and uh, do you agree or disagree? Okay. <laughs> okay, that's the one thing. What are other participatory uh, methods or events or actions that you have performed yourself or taken part? Go on. For uh, for the audience, uh, so the the app based the digital tool that allows you to tag the location, add your comments, um, agree, disagree on some other proposals, right? So digital interaction, and uh, I'd say then we can say there are two levels already in, in nowadays uh, that we can use as as a participation platforms. The one is offline, physical meetings, workshops, interactions, planners, sitting next to the uh, to the people, discussing directly, uh, hopefully in an inclusive way, the methods are also developing, and the online one, the digital realm, that we are, we have to, uh, we have to be present and we have to uh, grasp, right? They are, uh, there are many ways on how to use the XR. I'll try to just point out the three levels that serve uh, for both, for online and for offline. The first uh, is being able to teleport, virtually teleport. So while we are having uh, a workshop uh, in the, in, in the, the meeting uh, with the community, uh, we can very quickly teleport to the, any place in the city wherever we, we would be. We can teleport to any corner, a pocket, and put on the glasses and immerse ourselves within that space. And you can imagine that discussion on the spot is definitely much more productive than trying to put yourself like, oh, how was that? Was it good or not? Or was there a sun coming in from, from that corner or this corner, right? So being able to put um, uh, virtually teleport into any any place, uh, experience simulation uh, is something that you can put the the user into the uh, into the shoes of like using the space. So basically being able to uh, to immerse into the some user journey. Like uh, for example, we can uh, experience how it is to um, to use the space uh, for the person with the fewer opportunities, okay? Or even, you know, having a, 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 a I don't know, hit your, your leg and being not able to, you know, function well. How does it feel? What is the simulation of that? We are not able, unfortunately, to do that, uh, uh, to imagine ourselves, uh, put ourselves into other shoes that easily. The interaction is a sort of a third level, uh, which uh, is also used in the in Helsinki case um, of Telosukatu. <laughs> um, yes, exactly. So building a, a pop-up place where uh, people are able to uh, wear the uh, VR glasses and really in the virtual space to add the uh, additional elements that would help them on wayfinding, on, on using the space, uh, putting the marks right into the spot. How we would do it without the VR? We could use post-its and go 
and uh, from like this bustler corner and just put the post-its here we need a pedestrian crossing here we need the sign of this that would take uh, loads of time and wouldn't be as productive as uh, as you know opening this platform for everyone technologies however are not one like single development um, pile they develop together and there are other technologies that we can uh, very well integrate within uh, the planning process. For example, the chatbots, especially on online communication, right? So when you can receive the feedback on the go, we know from ourselves, not always we have that middle midday time to go for, uh, for to discuss the neighborhood plan, right? But we are able to access it via, via online. 5G networks empower the IoT and uh, uh, censoring uh, systems. So we are able to uh, get an information faster, transmit the information faster. Uh, the mobile access in general is something that empowers very much the involvement. And city sensing, of course, um, also the mm, self-driving vehicles as such, pretty much changed the way on how we plan and what kind of feedback do we need. And uh, technology again and data helps uh, us to empower our decisions and open that for communication. Very fast forward, a lot of questions. I really hope we can continue the discussion and uh, I'm looking forward to hear other, other speakers uh, uh, insight into that. Thank you. <laughs>